Gunfire and explosions hammered parts of Tripoli today as rebels swept through neighborhoods in search of Muammar Gaddafi. We begin our coverage with a report from James Mates of Independent Television News in the Libyan capital. Out of nowhere, the battle that still rages in Tripoli was on our doorstep. The hotel where most of the international press are staying and which had been considered relatively safe was engulfed in a gun battle between rebels and what they believed was a Gaddafi loyalist sniping from a high building. Sniper. It ended as suddenly as it had started, but it was typical of the firefights that are still making life so difficult for everyone in this city. Further south in the city, the rebels have managed to liberate large numbers of political prisoners held in the notorious Boussalim jail. Many had been held by the regime ever since the uprising began more than six months ago. As their guards fled, the prisoners themselves beat down the doors of their cells, in which many had been routinely beaten and tortured. This afternoon we met one of those who escaped, Abdul Hakim Aloze, now back home and reunited with his daughter Mayas. In the months he'd been held, he confirmed the worst of the stories we'd heard about Gaddafi's jails. He said he was captured, he said, and they put him in, in a cell, you know, they tortured him, they beat him repeatedly, you know, and, and they did everything possible, you know, in order to get some information for him. For the most part, the fighting and the weaponry have moved to the south of Tripoli. The rebels are now convinced they have this battle won. The one piece of news they do want to hear, though, is that Gaddafi has been captured. And this evening, rumours spread through rebel ranks that they may, just may, have members of the Gaddafi family, possibly even the colonel himself, surrounded in a building near his compound. Apartment blocks near Babalazia were stormed and doors kicked in amid heavy fire from both sides. A short time ago, those rumours, perhaps not surprisingly, turned out to be false, but the reaction to them shows the importance that's being put on capturing the man who has the power to end this war. Amid the fighting, Gaddafi remained defiant. One television station broadcast a voice message by Gaddafi denouncing the rebels as traitors the fight for the capital has taken an immense personal toll. Lindsay Hilsom of ITN visited one area north of Gaddafi's compound where the casualties of this civil war have been especially searing. Her report contains graphic images. The war is still within sight of Tripoli's Mansoura district, and what happened here will never be forgotten. A local computer engineer, Abdul Hamid, showed me where Colonel Gaddafi's neighborhood thugs had their headquarters. Big picture of Gaddafi here, yes. now gone. It was a place everyone feared. In the outside, in the, in Decorated the in the brother leader's favorite green, it's a monument to his eccentricity and to the brutality of his rule. Just outside, we found a group of young men who had watched in horror last Saturday as three people carrying the new Libyan flag had approached the Gaddafi checkpoint. The militiamen stopped them and kicked them to the ground. The people in the flats opposite called out, why are you doing that to Libyans? They said, if you don't like Gaddafi, we'll do the same to you. Watch us. The bus shelter bears the marks of what happened next. All three were shot in the head and left to die on the street. Next door was another Gaddafi stronghold where his followers would gather, a place to avoid in normal times and even more so recently. This was supposed to be a sports centre, but it seems that Gaddafi's people used it for something much more sinister. There's a patch of blood on the ground here and a terrible smell. The local men say there was a refrigerated truck here and they found more than 10 bodies inside. We went to the flat of the El Gula family. Two sons are still missing. Two have returned from a horrific ordeal. Arrested last Saturday night, they were interrogated for three days, but then released by Gaddafi's soldiers. Munir's story is almost too raw to relate. 
When they opened the gate, mercenaries came and pushed the soldiers back into the jail. They shot an old man in the leg. I didn't think they would kill us, but the mercenaries entered the jail and shot the prisoners in the legs. One took a grenade and threw it in. Five times they opened the door, shot inside and threw a grenade. A lot of people died. My brother Abdullah was behind me. He says somehow he escaped, but believes 20 soldiers and more than 100 prisoners were killed. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. The local mosque has become the centre for a new kind of neighbourhood rule. They're trying to establish law and order. The computer engineer, Abdul Hamid, showed us stolen goods they've taken from looters. And the weapons licences the mosque committee issues to men on roadblocks. It won't take too long to clear up the physical scars in Mansoura. The mental scars will take much longer. Late today at the United Nations, a U.S. official said agreement has been reached on a deal that would give the rebels access to one and a half billion dollars in Libyan assets now frozen in U.S. banks. The funds would be targeted for humanitarian efforts. Also, the rebels' national council said it would be moving immediately to Tripoli from its current headquarters in eastern Libya.